could I do if my hands were open? Who could I be if I was really free? What if I trusted what you have spoken? What could it change if I believed? Hi, I'm Kristen Ostrander and welcome to Music That Inspires. That was a phrase, the bridge to a song that really has inspired me in the last several months. You ever hear a song that just makes you stop dead in your tracks? A lyric, a sound, a something that's just, oh, what did that just say? And how it just penetrates just like water deep into your soul. It's like a fresh glass of water when you're so thirsty. And you can feel it moving down your throat and into your stomach and just feel so refreshing. That's how I really felt when the first time that I heard that line. What could I do if my hands were open? This is the lyrics by an artist called Tasha Layton. And the song is called Lay It Down. And I really just, this song had moved me in a way that I had not been moved for a time. Do you ever feel like you're in a dry land? You're really parched and you just feel like you're wandering and there's no direction and there's no road for miles and there's no road signs and there's anything and you're just wandering in the desert. <laughs> Maybe alone even. And you're just not sure what to do. You're stuck, you're frustrated, you're upset, you're going through hard times. Some of the hardest moments in my life, music has given me a breakthrough during a breakdown. And this song has been pivotal in reminding me that I do not have to carry the weight of the world on my own, that I am protected, that I don't have to be in control of everything. Don't have to be. The main thing that spoke to my heart about the song is that I realized that through my breakdown and through my wandering, that my hands were closed yet again. Have you ever held something so tightly that God had to pry it out of your hands? What did that feel like? I certainly have. Way back, let's rewind like a, a decade or more ago, when we were living in our forever home. We were the first homeowners in our family. And we were so proud of our little home and we searched and looked and finally found the right one for the right budget. And this is, we had a pool and a wonderful backyard and we lived in this neighborhood that was close to the school and close to the church and close to everything that we wanted to be in. Family and friends were just right down the road. Our forever home. We loved this home. But due to an injury my husband experienced from work, along with an economic downturn at the time, we faced the unimaginable. My husband's job was feast or famine. We always had either ups or downs and somewhere in between and just always tried to get by. But our dream was to own a home where we could raise our kids with stability. My husband grew up in a environment where he was always moving around and he wasn't able to establish like lifelong friendships and different things like that and just felt like he missed out on that over time and so as a family we decided we were going to save up and buy a home and try to raise our kids in the same school district in the same neighborhood and places like that so we could just be established and have security in that and Three days after my third child was born, my husband came home with a injury that would spin our family into a crazy whirlwind of events over the next couple of years. It was nearly a career ending injury. He is in commercial construction and it was a shoulder issue. And most people think that you can just file for workman's comp and sit on the couch and have some surgery. And once you're healed, you'll, everything will be great. The bills will be paid. It'll be fine. That is not the case most of the time. These insurance companies, these workers' compensation companies are not your friend. They do not want to help you. They do want to pay out as minimal as possible. So as he was going through being injured and figuring out what we were going to do with our family of five, I did have a small business that I was running, but with a newborn and two other um, elementary age children, I was quite busy and wasn't able to make enough income even at that time with my small business to support a family of five. So what were we going to do? And as he had this injury and we realized workers' compensation was not going to come in next week, just like a normal paycheck, we became behind over it and trying to raise a family and him trying to get surgery and physical therapy and trying to get back to health. In the meantime, things got worse and worse. And we lost our home to foreclosure. 
our forever home, the home that we wanted to raise our children. What were we going to do? We were facing foreclosure. We didn't have any money to bring it back. We were still recovering from the injury. I was making a little bit of money with my business, but it wasn't enough to sustain a family of five. What we realized over the next year or so trying to save our house is that we were gripping that house so tightly that God had to one by one pull our fingers apart. Pull our fingers apart. We were fighting with him like, oh, we will keep this house. This is our forever home. This is what we thought you gave us, God. We want to hold on to it. And so we went to every meeting and we filed every paperwork. Y'all, I literally had a two foot stack of papers from this whole incident. All the paperwork, all the submitting, all the everything. We did every single thing we could to save this house. We pulled all the money from savings. We pulled everything from everywhere we had. We sold almost everything we owned to try to save our forever house. We thought, this is what God gave us. This is what we're supposed to do. And slowly but surely realized it wasn't going to happen. And at the time, we were so discouraged. We were so frustrated. But what we realized is that we don't ever, what I learned from that experience is that you don't want to hold something so tightly that God has to pry it out of your hands. Because in reality, what could you do if your hands were open? You know what I realized about that? You can't receive with closed hands. Your hands are closed. You're gripping onto something so tightly that God can't put anything else in your hands. But what if your hands were open? And after going through that foreclosure experience and experiencing that, having a breakthrough moment after the fact, yes, we did lose our home to foreclosure. I'm not saying everything's all sunshines and rainbows here. What I'm saying is God was asking us to release that. And at that time, in our level of immaturity, we gripped and we grasped and we gripped and we did every single thing we could within our own control. And I mean everything, y'all, everything. We went to every webinar and seminar. We called every single person we could. We asked to borrow money. We sold things. We tried to keep this house all the while. God was in this background trying to whisper, trying to yell even, saying, I've got something better. Just let it go. And you know what? We never really did. He had to pry it out of our hands. And what is the lesson? The lesson that we learned was that he had something better. He always has something better when he asks you to open your hands. So this time around the block, right? We want to be the Israelites where they're walking around and around in the wilderness and they cannot learn the lesson. So they go around the mountain one more time, right? They're wandering one more year because they won't listen. They won't surrender. They won't open their hands. So this time around, God had been prompting me and he had been prompting me and he had been still small whispering over here and over there. And I kept saying, yeah, but, yeah, but what about? I can make this work. We can do this. There's another way around. Let's go around this way. Let's speak under this corner. That's all the while my hands were closed and gripping so tightly to something I loved and something I was really good at. My business. My business, right? And then I heard this song and it's time of walking with God and wrestling and saying, God, I'm going to give up my business just like you asked me to. God asked me to close my business. He asked me, it's time to let it go. It's time to let it go. And I said, okay, show me what's next, and then I'll let it go. Show me what's next, and then I'll let it go. And he said, trust me, let me go. And here I was, way back going around the same mountain I was going before, gripping so tightly out of fear and worry and wonderment even of what's going to be next. Just once you show me what's next, I'll gladly trust you in faith. Well, y'all, the hope of things not seen, Hebrews 11, 6, if it doesn't require faith, if you can see it. It doesn't require faith if you can see it. You can say, oh, I see the way. Now, yeah, sure, I'll let this go. Now I see what you've got for me. No, God wasn't asking me for that. And it was this song and this moment that was my breakthrough. It was my aha. See, God can use all kinds of things. If you've read your Bible, read it again and again and talk to friends and listen to people who have stories and you will hear over and over. Not only does God do the impossible, but he never does it in a way that we all think or expect. Can I get an amen? If you've been through anything, did God solve it exactly how you asked him to solve it? He certainly didn't. 
most of the time it just doesn't go our way. Why? Because he says his ways are higher than our ways. He sees the entire picture. And we only get a glimpse of what we see now. That's what requires faith and trust. We don't get to see it, but we get to see God. We have seen him work. We have seen him do things over and over again. And if you feel like you haven't seen it in your life, I challenge you to look back, look around. If you're a journaler, read something from five years ago and tell me you're not still in that place. Tell me what God did there or just read your Bible. He parted the Red Sea. He raised the dead. He gave a barren woman a child that he promised to give her. Healed the sick. He made a donkey talk. One that was chasing after Christians, killing them and condemning them to death. He converted to his own. Miracles. Witnesses, eyewitnesses that have seen all these things. Y'all, have you witnessed a miracle in your life? I bet you have. Same God that was working then is working now. You feel like a head slapper, right? You're like, oh, why couldn't I trust? So this is a breakthrough, right? God just reveals himself in the most gentle ways. And I absolutely love music for that reason, because he uses music to inspire us, to move us, to motivate us, to bring us to tears, to bring us to our knees, to bring our hands to the sky, to dance, to find glory, to find joy. And one day, as I was just, I picked a, a playlist from Spotify and I was like, okay, I'm going out. I'm a cornhole player. I love to play cornhole. It's something that is just, uh, I mean, you get to throw bean bags for as long as you want to, you like throwing stuff. And I'm not a violent person, but sometimes you just get that urge to like let energy out. And some people are runners and some people are this and that. I don't know. I just to throw things. <laughs> so this is a healthy, great way to throw things and practice and focus on something that's anything other than these four walls in this office that I am in. So I was out in my, I have this cornhole facility thing that my husband built me and it's amazing. You'll have, I'll have to put some pictures on Instagram or something, but I'm out in my cornhole palace <laughs> out in my yard and I put on my headphones and I just play just like new Christian music or whatever the playlist that I'm thinking. And I put my headphones in and I'm throwing bags and all of a sudden I hear this new song. And it's just going on and going on. And I really wasn't paying much attention to it at first. And I listened to a lot of music, Christian music, non-Christian music, old school, new school. Just I love new music. I love the messages and the stories. I want to know how I relate and how I feel into that. It just moves me. Music fills the cracks of our souls. I really do. It's pouring liquid gold into the crevices where sometimes words can't reach or you have these emotions that you have no, no way to express. Music is a way to just, I don't know, the fills the cracks of the soul. And so I'm listening and I'm just throwing my bags and my mind's preoccupied with other things. And I'm probably half praying and half like not paying attention. And all of a sudden this bridge of the song comes and all I hear is, what could I do if my hands were open? And that moment, all this stuff came back up of remember your house and how you were gripping it so tightly and i asked you to let it go and i promised that i had something for you and i always will be there and i will always provide for you and can you just trust me and let it go and, and i didn't then and what was the hard lesson the hard lesson is we went around the mountain so many times and had so many injuries and so many consequences for not obeying and not thinking and not releasing what god has asked us to release that i thought oh and in that moment, what could I do with my hands were open? I realized I was gripping my business so tightly I couldn't release it to God. And he just quietly whispered in this beautiful song, what could I do if my hands were open? Who could I be if I was really free? What if I trusted what you have spoken? What could it change if I believed? Y'all, it stopped me dead in my tracks. You ever had something that stopped you dead in your tracks? That was me in that moment. The song is called, Lay It Down. Lay it down. He was asking me in that moment, again, loudly and through the only way sometimes that I can be moved is through music. So the God, the lover of my soul, came at me another way. Yeah, I read my word every day and I pray for breakthroughs and I pray for wisdom and direction and discernment and for me to be an instrument that God can use for his good and his glory. And he says, what could I be if I was really free? 
in that moment, so many things were revealed to me that I wasn't free that as I was gripping so tightly to this business that God gave me and he gave me and he made me good at it and he built me up and he allowed me to flourish in this place. And I couldn't understand how God would allow me to build up something so amazing for him to just say, lay it down. I didn't get it until this moment because I realized that the very thing that he gave me, I was trying to control myself. I was trying to serve and love and give in my own strength. And he says, lay it down. See, oftentimes when God asks us to lay it down, to give it up, to walk away, we have fear that he's removing something from us, something good. Hey, my business was good, successful. I loved it. I loved what I was doing. I was engaged. I was inspired. I was helping other people accomplish their dreams. Yet I still had this longing inside of me to do more, to serve more, to be more. I felt muted. I wasn't really free. I was chained to the heavy responsibility of it. And y'all, I'm a person of responsibility. I love to be responsible. I'm one of those people that like overdevelop sense of responsibility. I don't know if it's nurture and nature or both, but I was always called to be responsible for myself. Growing up, that was very much instilled with us. Hard work ethic. You get nothing that you don't give. You really work hard. You do your best all the time. And I've always been super responsible. So I had all these responsibilities and all these what ifs and these doubts and these questions. God, you're calling me out of this. What about this? What if? Yeah, but yeah, but. He said, open your hands and lay it down. Other lyrics of this song, when the weight of the world feels like mountains. Anybody feel the weight of the world today? I certainly do. With wars and uproar in parts of the world and so many things in the culture screaming for our attention and telling us and comparing us to everyone and everything and measure up and get new eyelashes and make sure you have this lift and that lift and this clothes and those clothes and follow these influencers and read these books and do these things and do be go right does the weight of the world feel like mountains to you but god moves mountains he moves the mountains we don't have to He can set us free. And all he asks is for us to surrender, lay it down. Do you know that Jesus died, but they didn't take his life. He laid it down as he was asked to do on our behalf. For you and for me, out of love and out of trust and out of the promise that we anchor to, he said, I lay down my life. No one takes it from me. And we have that example to follow. He said his yoke is easy. His burden is light. He brings comfort to the weary soul. Do you know what a yoke is? This is where I wish I had a picture that I could show you. This is way back. If, you have, if you've ever been on a farm with animals or even this is, a lot of this is replaced by machinery today, right? So we don't often relate to it. And if you haven't been on a farm and you don't know anything about animals or oxen or anything like that, it's going to feel super for, foreign when you say things like yoke. My yoke is easy. A yoke is a, for lack of a better word, it's like this big beam of usually wood and it's got two animal harnesses on it. Usually it was for oxen, sometimes for horses or any type of thing. And they would put it on the ox in order to plow the fields or to pull something or to bring uh, the weight inside of it, right? And so he says his yoke is easy. Although we see two animals seemingly struggling to pull the heavy load that's behind it, when the yoke is even and well-weighted with two animals that are very close in nature and stature and maturity and size and weight, together they can pull 10 
times their weight. One oxen can pull one time its weight, but with two, it multiplies 10 times its weight. And when you're unequally yoked, you can only pull about three or four times its weight. Sure, it can pull because there are two animals, but if we have a big one and a small one, it doesn't pull evenly. It's all wonky. It can fall apart. It can do this and that. But Jesus says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He said, my burden is easy. Did he say there was no burden? No. He said, my yoke is easy. My burden is light because he's the strong one that helps carry. So between you and Jesus, you can move 10 times your weight. And alone, sure, you can do some things. Sure, you could do some things. But why not move 10 times the mountains with Jesus carrying the weight, more of the weight? He says, my yoke is easy. Let me ask you something. What are you carrying right now? Does it feel easy? We're all going to carry something. Let's just get that right. This is life. He said life is short and full of trouble. Life is short and full of trouble. You will carry burdens. But he's given us a way to lighten that load. He said, I will carry it. Take my yoke upon you. That requires action, y'all. Take my yoke. Accept it. It's easy and light. I will give you rest for your souls, he says. And so this song goes on to say, your yoke is easy, your burden light. You take a soul that's weary and bring comfort every time. And when my heart is heavy, I know without a doubt there's nothing you won't carry. So I lay it down. There's nothing you won't carry, Lord. Nothing you won't carry. There's nothing he won't carry for you. You don't have to. You don't have to carry the weight of the world. He's got it already. So let me ask you. What is it that you're trying to carry that's not yours to carry? Have you taken the yoke that's easy and light? The yoke that Jesus carries the majority of. He's strong and we are weak, yet he evens the yoke. I know these are weird words that people aren't familiar with sometimes or they haven't looked at these things, but honestly, they're relevant even now. He's the balance of the scale. We think we have to do so much and be so much all the time just to measure up when really, he's the one. He's the one that gives us our value and our worth. Something we don't have to struggle for or strive for or earn. It's already yours. He says, take it. He says, Lay it down. You will find rest for your soul. So what I ask you today, what I ask you today is what is God calling you to lay down at his feet? Keeping in mind that he laid down his life. Maybe it's a relationship. Maybe it's an insecurity. Maybe it's a dream. Because the Father is not interested in taking. True love is generous. We serve and love a generous God. One that makes a way when there's no way. Paid all of the penalty for you out of love he gave and gave. The Father is a giver. And he's asking you to lay something down so that you have open hands because you cannot receive with closed hands. So what is God calling you right now to open your hands about? What are you gripping to so tightly? You're so scared to let this one thing go because of what? Let's go back to that foreclosure for just a second. 
Hindsight's always 2020, right? And as we're stubborn and struggling against God, the struggle is real, but so are the solutions. And so is God. And if we could just trust what he says, first of all, you have to know what he says. In order to know what he says, read the word of God, listen to praise music, go to church and learn and study. He's got promises for you, y'all. Promises and love and generosity. Now, I'm not just saying health, wealth, and prosperity, y'all. Life is short and full of trouble, and we will all have burdens. We don't just get to have an eraser and erase all the consequences for all of our negative actions and negative things that we have brought into our own lives. We receive forgiveness. We receive love. We receive mercy. We receive grace. But we are always called to action. We are called to action. Just in the verses I was reading you. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for my burden is easy and light, and you will find rest for your souls. There's always action in Jesus' words. He asks you to do something. We don't just sit here and receive and receive. First of all, are your hands open to receive? That's going to require laying some stuff down. Maybe it's pride. Maybe it's selfishness. Maybe it's a business like he asked me to lay down or a home or a relationship. But he never leaves you empty handed. He is a giver and he asks of you. He gives and gives and he supplies all of your needs. But he asks of you to open your hands. He'll tell you to put off something and put on something else. So I'm asking you now, just as I have had to lay down something many times, we see what he brings. Because that foreclosure, the house that he had to pry out of our hands, the whole time, he had a plan. And we didn't in the moment trust that his plan was going to be better than the plan we could make for ourselves. And so in true God fashion, he did something only God can do. A miracle. Due to circumstances beyond our control or beyond our understanding, he took one house and gave us another. Even the real estate agents, even the financial advisors were baffled at how we qualified to get another house. Yeah, I was a fixer upper for sure. My husband's a carpenter, so that's no problem. But he didn't take a house and allow and make us live in our car with our three kids. He provided. And he would have provided much sooner had we opened our hands a little bit sooner. So what did we learn? That's a phrase I use in my house all the time, y'all. My kids are, one of my sons specifically was always one that needed to touch water to know it's wet. Even if I said that hurts, that's dangerous, it's going to hurt you. He was "Eh, let me just find out. Let me just find out. He's got some scars to prove it. And the question's always, all right, son, what'd we learn? Oh, yeah, you're right. I should have trusted you. That was hot. It burned me. Do that. Okay, what'd we learn? We have scars, y'all. We're all going to have scars. But as we grow and mature in our faith and we see God working over and over, we learn to trust more. So as I was stubbornly trying to grip onto this business that was so amazing, sometimes God lets us, asks us to let go of something good, not just addictions and sin. He asks us to let go of good things because he wants to give us better things. And he gave us a better house. He built it up better. Different doesn't mean it's difficult. Doesn't mean it's not difficult to go through it. Doesn't mean it's not difficult to experience loss and grief and frustration and consequence for our own sin. But he always wants to give us better. So just like Tasha has asked us in this song, What if I trusted what you have spoken? What could it change if I believed? And sometimes those breakthroughs come right after the obedience. Sometimes not a moment after. Sometimes it's a season of waiting. 
and trusting over and over again. God, you asked me to leave this place. I'm going to leave it, but my hands are open. What have you got for me? Because he's never going to not fill you up. When your hands are open, he continues to pile on the blessings as you trust, as you move forward. So that's the question that Tasha Layton is asking you and lay it down. She's just reiterating, what is God asking you to lay down? Using the word, all of this is from the word of God. We're all just creative artists finding a way to break through, whether by music or by word or by encouragement. What is God asking you to lay down right now? Because I can promise you this, through his word, he says, he wants the absolute best for you. He is the loving, generous father. And he wants the absolute best for you. And sometimes he has to take away our distractions and our idols and things that we've looked upon for comfort and peace in order to remind us that he is that for us. But he always has your best interest in mind. What if I trusted what you've spoken? Y'all, that day was the day, the breakthrough. And since then, I've been obedient and laid it down. And guess what? He still hasn't showed me the full plan. He still hasn't truly revealed what my next move is, my next career option is. Right now, I'm currently unemployed, <laughs> joyfully, because bearing the burden of trying to do it all myself has been released. I have laid it down. Who can I be when I'm really free? And so my hands are open and I'm willing and ready to receive all that God is giving me and will give me because he says, I have a hope and a future for you. Jeremiah 29, a hope and a future. He will give you the desires of your heart. And that doesn't mean he's the magical genie Jesus that you can rub and get a few wishes. No. The desires of our heart begin to align with him and his word. And that's what he gives us. If you have a dream inside of you, that's where it comes from. Asking God to show you that and reveal that to you. Are you aligning your life with his word? Because that's when the breakthroughs happen. When we finally surrender to the one who loves us and wants what's best for us. So I'm asking the question that this song is asking. And all the links will be posted uh, below this video so that you can listen to the song, add it to your playlist, and just ask yourself that question over and over again. What could I do if my hands were open? open to possibility, open to change, open to restoration and renewal and revival, because that's what God is all about. What could it change if you truly believed that if God is asking you to lay this down, it's because he's got something even better for you. This is just music that inspires me. I hope that you will click the link below this video or look at the show notes and listen to Tasha Layton's Lay It Down. I've got this and more coming up a music that inspires, and I'd love to hear from you. What's been on your playlist lately? What's been on your mind lately? What song has God used to change your life and your mind and your heart? We're going to talk about all kinds of different songs. I love music to my core, and I can't wait to explore more of these for me. What is God speaking through music to me, to you, to all of us? But it's always that challenge at the end of the day. What action are you going to take? What is God calling you to do? Because, y'all, it's not just here for fluffy inspiration. I heard a, a, a thing recently, and I can't remember. Oh, Lord, please forgive me. I can't remember the man I just on TV that was giving this message. And he said, we're not here for this Christian cocaine, so to speak, to just get a hit of Christian inspiration and then try to carry us the rest through the week. No, we are here to be trained. He says, take my yoke and learn from me. How are you learning? How are you learning and growing and applying this to your life? Because it requires action. What are you going to do about it? What'd you learn? How can you grow? 
what could you do if your hands were open? So open your hands, my friends, and receive what God is waiting to give you once you stop grasping all the things that he is asking you to lay down. Because change comes with belief, comes with trust, comes with freedom of open hands. Friends, I pray for you. I pray that you will listen to the Holy Spirit at this point and really examine your heart and your mind now to see what is God asking you to lay down? How can you open your hands to let go of something to receive something better? I know you could be anywhere else listening to any other thing. I don't take that for granted. Please listen to the song, Lay It Down by Tasha Layton and be inspired by it and really sit and contemplate today what God is asking you to lay down. We'll see you same time, same place next week on Music That Inspires.